Good afternoon, hello and welcome. This is Switch Focus, your daily update on news making headlines globally. My name is David Kagina and the sign language interpreter is Michael Maithia. Now on to our first story. Japan's Prime Minister is in the US and has become the first foreign leader to hold face-to-face -face talks with President Joe Biden with concerns about China topping the agenda. Yoshihide Suga will be hoping to renew the all-important alliance with Washington after Trump era as well as compare notes on an increasingly assertive Beijing. The trip comes after two top U.S. officials visited Japan in March and following a summit of leaders from the Quad Alliance, a grouping of the United States, Japan, Australia and India, the theme of all the diplomatic activity has been clear, signaling a united front to Beijing at a time of growing concern about its military stance and human rights issues. As U.S. President Joe Biden prepares to meet with Japan's Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga today, his first face-to-face -face bilateral meeting, White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki says that their approach to China and shared coordination and cooperation on that front will be part of the discussion. Psaki also discussed Biden next month with South Korea's President Moon Jae-in at their daily press briefing, as well as Washington's latest sanctions on Moscow for hacking and election meddling. A number of people were shot in an incident Thursday in the U.S. city of Indianapolis, Surrey, by a gunman who is believed to have then killed himself. Police say no information was then given to the severity or numbers of the casualties at the FedEx facility near the International Airport, as Brian Munder now reports. The director of the World Health Organization's Europe branch, Hunes Klug, has given an online press briefing from Athens with an update on the situation of the COVID-19 pandemic in the region. Denmark has announced it would stop using the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine altogether, becoming the first European country to do so over suspected rare but serious side effects. Danish Health Authority Director Soren Brostrom has said that at a press conference in Copenhagen, where more than a dozen countries followed suit, most have subsequently resumed its use after the European Medicines Agency, EMA, emphasized the benefits of the vaccine, judging it as safe and effective. Denmark, however, held off using the vaccine as it conducted investigation of its own. The number of people killed by COVID-19 in France climbed past 100,000 mark on Thursday, with the virus claiming further 300 lives in the past 24 hours, according to the country's health authority. A day earlier, the death toll stood at 99,805. France is the third country in the Europe to reach the grim milestone of 100,000 coronavirus deaths after the United Kingdom and Italy. Nearly 30,000 people were killed in France in the first wave of the pandemic between mid-March and mid-May last year, but the bulk of the deaths have been recorded since October when the country was hit by a second surge of in infections that remained stuck at a high level through the end of 2020. 11 minutes past the hour, we're headed for a short break, so remember, don't switch, keep it switch. Yes, you're joining us right now. This is Switch Focus with me, David Kagina, and on sign language is Michael Maithe. Now, the Civilian Office of Police Accountability, COPA, have released police body camera footage showing an officer who was assaulting a Latino boy in Chicago. The shocking footage shows a teenager, Adam Toledo, running from officers in the small hours of March 29th and then being hit with a single shot to the chest as he stops and raises his hands. Prosecutors say he was armed, although no weapon is visible in his hands in the video when it is struck. Majibu Kisau with the report. To soothe and relieve patients' mental distress, a psychiatric hospital in Paris is using dance and poetry to help the vulnerable who are increasingly at risk as a result of COVID lockdowns. About a dozen Ukrainian athletes, coaches and senior Ukrainian Olympic staff have gotten their first vaccine jab ahead of the Tokyo Olympic Games. With just 99 days until the Olympics, Japan won't require Olympic participants to be vaccinated. But the International Olympic Committee is encouraging jabs and has secured Chinese-made doses for athletes in countries without access to them. Tokyo 2020 Olympics President Seiko Hayashimoto says the committee is not considering to cancel the Olympics this summer. The comment comes a day after the senior Japanese politician said cancelling the Tokyo Olympics over the coronavirus remains a possibility as a surge in cases renews concerns about the Games with less than 100 days to go. 
Hundreds of mostly unmasked Israelis watched the aerial show over the Mediterranean coastal city of Tel Aviv during celebrations marking Israel's 73rd Independence Day. This year's ceremony once again takes place before a live audience as COVID warns, though at a reduced size to maintain distancing. Most of the Jewish communities in the Western world have incorporated this modern holiday into their calendars, but some North American Jewish communities hold the public celebrations on a following Sunday in order to attract more participation. In the state of Israel, it is a formal holiday, so almost everyone has the day off. An explosion killed at least one civilian yesterday at a marketplace in Baghdad's densely populated majority Shit Esad city, according to the army, who did not say who or what caused it. Iraqi authorities are usually quick to announce terrorist acts, often blaming the Islamic State groups, which has continued to carry out attacks despite its territorial defeat in late 2017. But despite reports on social media of a car bomb, the authorities did not immediately confirm that Thursday's blast was an attack. The military did, however, say that 12 people were wounded as well as the civilian killed. Dozens of the police and soldiers were deployed, blocking a major street through the district. Now, Benny Madoff, the mastermind behind the world's financial scam in history, has died in prison at the age of 82. Madoff was sentenced to 150 years in prison in 2009 for running a pyramid style scheme that defrauded tens of thousands of people around the world. The scheme was estimated to be worth anywhere between $25 billion and $63 billion. And that story right there brings us to the end of our bulletin. Thank you for sticking with me, David Kagina and Sign Language Michael Mathia. But before we leave, I'd love to remind you that being busy is a choice and being happy is also a choice. So this weekend, make the choice to be happy. Wishing you a lovely weekend.